OK, so we're going to solve a problem where we need to find the last non-zero digit of 75 factorial in base 10. And this is related to a familiar type of problem where it's quite common to be asked how many zeros are there at the end of a certain factorial number. So we'll start by actually finding the number of zeros at the end of 75 factorial. So this all relies on its prime factorization. So we think about 75 factorial. The number of zeros at the end is basically the number of multiples of 10 that go into 75. So this will be determined by how many 2s and 5s there are in its prime factorization. So we've got 5, 10, 15, all of the 5s all the way up to 75. So this gives us there are 15 multiples of 5 there. So we've got at least 5 to the power of 15. But then we've also got 25, 50, and 75 there, which contribute 5 squared each. So there's actually another 3 powers of 5 as well go into 75 factorial. So we've got 5 to the power of 18. Then there's going to be a lot more than 18 powers of 2 go into 75 factorial. So we've got 2 to the power of 18 times 5 to the power of 18, and no more 5s go into 75 factorial. So it ends in 18 zeros then. Then the idea from here is we're going to take 75 factorial, divide this by 2 to the 18 times 5 to the 18. So we're dividing it by 10 to the power of 18 to get rid of all of these zeros at the end of it. And then we just need to consider the last digit. So we might want to consider this number modulo 10, but as we'll see in a sec, it's actually going to be really helpful to consider this modulo 5, which will still give us lots of useful information about what its last digit would be. And the last digit of this number is going to be the last non-zero digit of 75 factorial. We've just got rid of all of the zeros there, effectively. So to see why it's going to be helpful to consider this modulo 5, we'll just split up this product, 75 factorial, into all of its multiples of 5. Then in between all of the multiples of 5, we have the product of four consecutive integers. And these are quite nice to work with, these products of four consecutive integers, because they're the ones in between our multiples of 5. So they're always of the form some multiple of 5 plus 1 times some multiple of 5 plus 2 times a multiple of 5 plus 3 and finally a multiple of 5 plus 4, whether it's 1, 2, 3 and 4 or 71, 72, 73, 74. And then when we consider this product, modulo 5, you can see that when we expand the brackets here, almost everything is going to be a multiple of 5 because it will include a 5n in the product. In fact, the only term that isn't a multiple of 5 is going to be the 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which gives us 24. So we can say then modulo 5, each of these products is going to be equivalent to 24 modulo 5, but this would be also equivalent to 4 modulo 5. But because we're going to multiply lots of these together, we'll actually say that this is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 5. So now we can evaluate almost the whole product 75 factorial. If you imagine we do this without all of the multiples of 5s, so we do 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, then multiply by all of the other non-multiples of 5 up to 71 times 72 times 73 times 74. So we see that 5 goes into 75 15 times, so we've got 15 of these blocks. So this is just equivalent to minus 1 to the power of 15, or equivalent to minus 1 modulo 5. But then we can express this product without all of the multiples of 5 in terms of 75 factorial by dividing through by all of these multiples of 5. So we actually have 75 factorial divided by 5 times 10 times 15 all the way up to 75. But then we can still get a nicer expression for this as well, where we notice that we've got 5, 10, 15. All of these we could actually take out a factor of 5. So this would be equivalent to 75 factorial divided by... So if we take a factor of 5 out of all 15 of these numbers in the product in the bottom, we've got 5 to the power of 15. And then we've just got left 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 up to times 15, so times... 15 factorial. So this product, remember, is actually just the product we were working with a moment ago, where we have 75 factorial, but without all of the multiples of 5. So we know that this fraction, then, is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 5. So then we can see we're getting closer to 
finding the last digit of this by considering it modulo 5. There's just a little bit more work to be done to get this to look exactly like 75 factorial over 2 to the 18 times 5 to the 18. And the next step is to work with this 15 factorial term modulo 5. So we can break this up into the product of its multiples of 5, so just 5, 10 and 15, then each of these products of four consecutive non-multiples of five. So we know from before that each of these terms are just equivalent to minus one modulo five. So then we can rewrite this whole fraction then as 75 factorial over, we have five to the power of 15 still, times five, times 10, times 15. Then we're just left with a single minus one in the denominator there. And we can take out our powers of 5 from the 5, 10, and 15. Then we can say that all of this is going to be equivalent to 75 factorial over... Now we've got 5 to the power of 18 times 1 times 2 times 3 times minus 1. So we know that 1, 2, and 3 gives us 6, which is equivalent to 1 modulo 5. So then we can say that this is all going to be equivalent to 75 factorial over... And we've just got minus... 5 to the power of 18 in the denominator. And remember that 75 factorial over 5 to the 15 times 15 factorial, the quantity we're working with, we've shown already this is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 5. So we know that all of this is equivalent to minus 1 mod 5. And then we can just multiply by minus 1 on each side. So taking the positive, we get 75 factorial over 5 to the power of 18 is equivalent now to positive 1 modulo 5. And you can see we're getting really close now to having 75 factorial over 2 to the 18 times 5 to the 18 modulo 5. And there's a nice way of working with 2 to the 18 modulo 5, which is to notice that 2 to the 18, if we write this as 4 to the power of 9, we know that 4 is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 5. So this is equivalent to minus 1 to the power of 9, or equivalent to just minus 1 modulo 5. So then when we divide here by 2 to the power of 18, we're effectively just dividing by minus 1 modulo 5. So we get 75 factorial over 2 to the 18 times 5 to the 18. Instead of being equivalent to 1 mod 5, we've divided by negative 1, so this is now equivalent to negative 1 modulo 5. And remember that negative 1 is equivalent to 4 modulo 5. So this is telling us then that this number we're interested in, we're interested in its last digit, we know that it's equivalent to 4 modulo 5, it's a multiple of 5 plus 4, so the last digit has got to be either 4 or 9 when we write this in base 10. So I think now the easiest way to determine if it's 4 or 9 is just to think, is this number odd or even? So when we had 75 factorial, we divided through by all of its powers of 5 in its prime factorization. So when we've divided by 5 to the 18, there are no 5s left. And we've divided through by 2 to the 18, but there's actually a lot more powers of 2. There's more than just 18 2s in the prime factorization of 75 factorial. So there's actually a lot of 2s left, which means that this, even though we've divided by 2 to the 18, it's still going to be an even number, because it's got more 2s left in its prime factorization. So this is telling us then that its last digit certainly can't be 9, so the last digit has got to be 4. Now remember what we've done here is we started with 75 factorial. This ends in 18 zeros. We've effectively divided this by 10 to the power of 18 to get rid of all of those zeros, and the last digit left is 4. So this is telling us then that the last non-zero digit of 75 factorial is 4.